What is something you will not apologize for? Moving abroad. This video is going to investigate how much better the lives of Black women are once they leave the U.S. or their home countries in Africa. This is part two in a series I started on socialism for Black women. If you're following along, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and click the Socialism for Black Women playlist to watch all the videos. I will never apologize for choosing my mental health and choosing the opportunity to increase my quality of life. In addition to the fact that Black expatriation is not a new phenomenon, it is not a new concept. The concept of Black people escaping America isn't new, but in 2016, it was reconceptualized. I actually had to sit down and remind myself how we ended up talking about Blacksit all of a sudden in the 2010s. It was Dr. Ulysses Burley III who invented the word in 2016 to talk about all the things America would lose if Black people suddenly left, from the polio vaccine to traffic lights. It was probably after the presidential election that same year that Blacksit changed from a question of what if we left to how do we leave right now. Black Americans aren't the only people looking for a better life outside of their home countries. At least one million people from Sub-Saharan Africa moved to Europe since 2010, and by 2017, over four million lived there. Studies show most Africans leave for Europe as asylum seekers, but the number one reason is for economic opportunities. The UN found that African women living in Europe earned 11% more income than African men still living on the continent. There's no official study explaining why Black women are migrating out of the US. Most evidence is anecdotal, with women telling TikTok or different publications that they're leaving for A, a higher quality and affordable life, B, better and affordable healthcare, and C, a life without or less racism. I've had two black sits, one to Africa and one to Europe. For me, a black sit doesn't really mean much unless you're moving to a country with a completely different system than the one that was harming you in your home country. And for me, that means moving to a country as closely aligned with or as adjacent to socialism as possible. If you don't know what socialism is, or even if you think you know what socialism is, I highly recommend that you watch the video Socialism for Absolute Beginners by Second Thought on YouTube. For the sake of my video, I'm going to define what I'm calling a socialist country because the truth of the matter is there is no country out there operating under pure socialism perfectly. So I'm going to talk about Black women moving to countries where there are these two criteria. One, healthcare is either completely free or highly subsidized by the government and is affordable and widely available to people who are permanent residents or citizens. And second, welfare systems that include but are not limited to free higher education, guaranteed paid maternity leave, government funded maternity leave, paid and guaranteed mandatory time off, and also long-term or unlimitedly available unemployment support. If you wanna know why I choose these specific criteria, you gotta keep watching. Quick disclaimers. One, this is not going to be a complete and comprehensive analysis of the question I'm trying to answer. I suggest that you subscribe to my Substack newsletter using the link in my video description box below to stay updated on any new research that I come across on this topic. Second, it is very hard to do a apples to apples comparison of how black women's living conditions are in their home countries versus when they move abroad. That's because from the sources that I'm citing in this video, the data is not collected in a uniform way across all of them. Every day I see women on Facebook groups and in Discord chats talking about how desperate they are to move somewhere where they can find a better life. And I don't think that we should wait until there's a perfect situation where we have all the information and data that we need to make a fully comprehensive analysis to give them the resources they need to start making decisions for themselves. So with those disclaimers out of the way, let's begin. Except for Black Americans, the majority of Black people or people of African descent moving abroad are from the following three countries. Nigeria, South Africa, and Somalia. I'm going to focus on migrants from America, Nigeria, and South Africa for this video 
because demographically, the majority move abroad as permanent residents or international students. Migrants from Somalia are typically asylum seekers, and I feel that that deserves its own separate video at a later date. What are the living conditions of Black women in the US, Nigeria, and South Africa? Let's start with the US. In a Pew Research survey, 65% of Black Americans say that the increased national attention on racial inequality has not led to changes that improve their lives. For every 100,000 people, 166 Black women in America die from heart disease versus 132 non-Hispanic slash white women, according to John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Black women are three times more likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause than white women in America, based on a CDC report from 2022. Over 1,000 Black people were killed by police in 2022, according to the Washington Post. And if you're wondering why, Rutgers University found that countries that exhibit high fatal police violence rates, the US included, along with Venezuela, Canada, Australia, Brazil, France, and Belgium, are distinguished by their mistreatment of minorities. Nigeria is the country with the largest population of people of African descent, or largest population of Black people in the African diaspora. 20% of global maternal deaths occur in Nigeria, and the country is in the top five list of countries with the highest maternal death rate. Nigeria has a nationalized healthcare system that's underfunded, meaning that citizens still pay out-of-pocket costs that they usually cannot afford. Only two healthcare workers are available for every 1,000 people in Nigeria, and only 33% of women are gainfully employed in the private sector, according to the International Finance Corporation. In South Africa, 87% of women were employed based on data reported by the World Bank in 2019. The World Bank also labeled South Africa as the most unequal country in 2019, as reported by CNN. The average CEO earns 149 times the salary of Black South African women, according to Oxfam. And for every 100,000 women, 113 died during childbirth, with risk higher for groups mostly populated by Black South African women, for example, HIV positive women or those with hypertension. As I said in part one of my series, the US doesn't track how many Americans expatriate to other countries. So it's hard to get concrete data on how many Black women are leaving the US and where they're moving to. However, there is data on the countries that statistically have the most Black or African migrants, and these are usually countries in Europe. Sidebar, it's also the US, but since this video is also discussing the migration of Black women out of America, we won't count it here. From my previous video, you saw the top 15 countries most searched for, for migration, and I began discussing the quality of life for Black people and women living in Canada as well as Portugal. For this video, we'll talk about France and Spain. Unfortunately, France doesn't collect public policy information disaggregated by race or ethnicity. According to the French Constitution, specifically Article 8-1 of a 1978 law on digital rights, the French government prohibits anyone from collecting or processing personal data which reveal directly or indirectly racial or ethnic origins. So there were very few reports I could find with empirical data on how well black women were coping with living there. France is included in this video because it has a socialized healthcare system and a mixed economy and is the fifth most popular choice for relocation globally. A July 2021 Vice report shows French women experiencing violent treatment by their OBGYN during childbirth. For example, France is using episiotomies at a higher rate than the WHO advises. In a survey obtained by Vice says 71% of women said that they received one without consenting to it. A research team at the Sorbonne, Paris, says that a woman dies from childbirth every four days in France. Spain is the number three choice for expats or migrants globally. 82% of migrants from African countries like Nigeria experience racist attacks or incidents the highest rate in the country, according to Reuters. 56% of the country's racial profiling events in 2022 were carried out by the police and mostly against Black people. One out of three Black migrants, including Black Americans, said that they face racial discrimination while house hunting in Spain. A report I've quoted a lot from BMC Public Health shows that African migrants admitted they were afraid to use public health care system in Spain because of the racism towards them from doctors and hospital staff. To quickly summarize, Black women moving to France and or Spain are potentially at risk of A, being a victim of medical malpractice, B, housing discrimination, and C, 
racial profiling by police. Per my disclaimer, this analysis is not comprehensive enough because of the limited or lack of data available and dissected along racial and gender intersections. And that's not just me saying this. The academic community has criticized the EU for making it hard to truly know how well people of Black and African descent are treated. I suggest subscribing to my Substack newsletter using the link in the video's description box because I send out at minimum monthly updates to my subscribers on the issue I research related to Black women of the African diaspora. I'll keep you updated via the newsletter on the progress made in scientifically an analyzing how and why Black women thrive better in socialist countries or socialized economies. Don't forget to comment below this video with your thoughts and feedback. It was extremely helpful in the last video. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel to continue following the series.